Hey, I'm going to talk about some lenses. I have 11 lenses here. There's one out on loan. So I have 12 lenses that I use pretty consistently, pretty often for specific things. Um, in photography, photographers often say it's all about the glass. You've got a better glass. It's not about the camera. It's about the lens. And that is absolutely true. Um, the problem is that really good lenses cost a lot of money. So here are some lenses that don't necessarily break the bank um, that I've discovered over the, over the course of buying and selling a lot of stuff. I've been through my records. I've got 50 lenses that I can find in my records that I bought on the way to evaluating different lenses for different things and ending up with this. Um, a caveat is that if you've bought a Nikon D3000 series or D5000 series, you can't use many of these. And I will create a link to the, I'll create a link in the comment to my video about why the Nikon D300, 3000, the D3000, D5000 series are not a good idea. And so I'll create that link. So here's what we've got. Um, let's start at the telephoto end. I'll make another video about the difference between constant aperture and variable aperture zoom lenses, um, but go Google that. The difference between constant aperture and variable aperture lenses. And you will see that fixed aperture lenses tend to be a better lens and a more pro lens um, because the physics is harder, it's harder to make, but the, but the bottom line is the value is a lens like that, it's constant 2.8 lens when it's zoomed in, will let in four times, four times the double the light, almost triple the light of a cheaper consumer zoom. Now triple the light is three stops and that's, that's a lot. So I'll create another video specifically about that. But as long as you have a camera like a D90 or a D80 or a D7000 or a D7100 or a D300 or a D200 or a D700 or basically any camera that has, I'm pushing a little nub here. It's like the little head of a screwdriver. That's a, that's a focus screw that, it means that this camera has a built-in focus motor, so you don't have to buy a lens that has a built-in focus motor. So that opens up your whole world. So here is a lens that I own. I just took it on vacation because I didn't want to take that. But it's actually almost the same lens. Optics aren't quite up to the quality. That's a 70 to 210 constant f4 lens, as opposed to a 80 to 200, 80 to 200, so it even has a little bit more range, um, f2.8. Now that lens is an absolute beast. That lens is astonishing. It's still available today. It's from 90s, did it start in the 90s? It's called, it's the twin ring version of that, the, of the, of the, a, of that series. So, so the newest one is the VR2 70 to 200 or 70 to 210. It's 2,500 bucks or something. Um, but there's still a big following for this lens. It's still available today. It's because it's more optically simple than the newer lens and the VR and because it's driven by the focus in the camera. There are advantages to this. Personally, um, I prefer this over the VR2 lens. This cost me 350 bucks, although it needed some love. They're kind of, you can pick them up for five, 550 all day long. That lens, you will never regret buying that lens. That lens is absolutely astonishing. There are so many times that I will take that lens on my full frame body and that is it. Apart from maybe a wide angle lens or the 50 millimeter in my pocket because that lens is astonishing um so that lens how much is a let's see how much is a consumer like on 55 to 200 say new
that is it's only fifty bucks used. It's because it's junk. Or like a twenty or a fifty-five to three hundred, which is a bit more reach. Uh, two hundred twenty-five dollars. But it just it does not compare, not even a little bit. So the new version of this, I think, seventy to two hundred, two point eight Nikon. Two grand, two thousand dollars for the newer one, and I actually prefer this. I really, I genuinely prefer this. I prefer the coloring. Um, it's built like a tank. I like it. So, talking maybe five, say four fifty, six hundred for the twin ring version of that. That I bought, I got for eighty bucks. Um, and I would rather have that all day long than any of the newer, even VR zooms. All day long, I would prefer that lens. Um, going off telephotos, there's an interesting little lens. It's one of the few variable aperture lenses I have. It's a 28 to 105 f1.5 f3.5 to 4.5D. And the reason I've kept it is, uh, actually the reason I've kept it is because I want to play around. I want to take it out for a day with my Nikon D3 and only that lens and see if I use it. And if I don't, I'll sell it. But it's actually really, really good macro lens. Um, and I think optically, I find that better than the Nikon consumer lenses for sure. Uh, and 28 to 105 is in pretty nice range with a, with a full frame camera. So, but that one's, that one might, that, that was on the fence. If I don't, if I take that out and use it and don't love the results and then don't find myself grabbing it and putting it in my camera bag, then it's going. Uh, it's about $125 used. Uh, but again, much better than consumer modern zooms. Uh, I'm going to stick with zooms, though. The The mid-range zoom, that is a... There's a D version of this, too. I don't know how far it is. Shooting this on crappy lens of a, of a phone, which is kind of ironic. Um, that's a constant... F2.8, 35 to 70 millimeter. There's also a D version. I got that for 280, I think. They're around 300 used. That is a really, really good lens. Um, again, better than consumer for that kind of money. That is a, that's a pro lens, it's older. This could be from the late 80s, from film cameras. Could be as, as old as the 80s. That's a really good lens, so general just walking around lenses if I was going out with my D3S which I probably won't because it's so heavy so that's the disadvantage of that camera but if I'm just going out for, for some walking around right now if I was leaving the house I would either have that on it or that on it if I was using a zoom so either that zoom that I'm thinking about or the 3570 um, the only newer consumer zoom I have is the 18 to 35 millimeter 3.5 to 4.5 G. So on that's a full frame lens. Um, it was six hundred dollars or something. It's around six hundred dollar mark. Super hard to find used. I actually bought it new, but it was a really decent price because they're just not available. Just not available used. Um, and I had a I had a Samyang fourteen millimeter manual focus lens. I just wasn't using it, and I felt I need I need a wide angle zoom, but actually I don't. I hardly use it. So right now I'm experimenting with this twenty millimeter f four manual focus. If I grab that more than I grab that, then I'm going to sell them both. So probably. 550 because they're just not they don't come up used 500 at least 500 200 for that so is that 700 bucks I'll spend maybe $300 on the 20 millimeter f 2.8 D lens so I'll have another an extra few hundred bucks to spend on other stuff in my pocket so yeah I don't really use that but it is it is an exceptional lens it's exceptionally sharp um, 
I just don't do the ultra wide thing very often anymore. And at because it's very ap variable aperture at f at thirty five millimeter, it's an f four point five, and that's the depth. That's just not. Brr. I'm kind of a depth of field, big aperture kind of guy. So what else? Portraits. Everybody, if you do portraits, generally the choice, the pro choice, is between the 85 millimeter or using the 80 to 200 zoom. The 85, this 85 millimeter is available in a 1.8 and a 1.4. Uh, I haven't owned the 1.4. This is the G. I haven't owned the 1.4. I don't. Um, it's so much more money for just a little bit more, a little bit more aperture. I can't pull the trigger on that. That is considerably better though than the 85 millimeter 1.8 D, its predecessor, which I had, and and I I've done side side by side. I've used them, and this is definitely better. Definitely worth the money. Um, so of my fixed lenses, let's pull them out apart from macro. I've got the 85, I've got the 50, I've got the 35, which is on loan right now, um, but it's only for my crop sensor, the DX camera, I have a D7100. Then I've got a bunch of stuff that's sitting out of my vintage collection, but manual focus, I at 20 millimeter, I do use, um, and it's very, very usable. So those are the kind of primes that I have. The 50 millimeter that on a full frame camera is pretty much the same view as your eye sees. So very often, if I'm taking out a full frame camera, I will just, just take that on, just walking around, just take that. Um, I'm actually more likely to do that than use taking any of the zooms. Um, so what we got left, then macro. I do a lot of macro photography and it's as much to sell stuff on eBay as, as being artistic, but two lenses. This is the, I just sold my 55 millimeter manual focus lens, which is insanely good, but I never use it because I've got this. So this was replaced, this is the 60 millimeter D. That focus kind of sucks. Um, this has been replaced by the G version, which is not even close to as good. So as long as you have a camera with a focus motor, motor you can buy the 60 millimeter f 1.8 D Nikon micro, which is their word for macro. That is a really, really, really good lens, um, better than the G. So maybe 250, 300 used better than the G. And then I picked this up on a whim, uh, also macro. This is the equivalent. So Nikon have a 105 millimeter f2.8 lens, and it's insanely expensive. This is a Takina 100 millimeter f2.8 lens, and side by side, uh, I can't tell the difference. I mean, this lens is really an astonishing Tokina. This is kind of a secret, brilliant lens. Again, used around 300 bucks. Um, if you're using a crop sensor camera, that is almost, it's a little bit too telephoto maybe even for macro. But on a fixed frame camera, those two lenses, the 60 and the 100, just really, really, really good job. I think that's about it. I mean, so for travel, if I'm traveling light, I will probably take Nikon D7100 crop sensor camera. I'll take that as my telephoto, and I'll take the 35 to 70. If I'm doing sports, that all day long, and either the 20 millimeter wide angle or the 50 millimeter just for anything else that might come up. Um, if I'm just going, if I'm doing portraits, if I'm doing studio kind of portraits, or if I'm doing shooting the kids or anything, it's going to be between the 85 millimeter or the zoom. 
if I'm, I don't know, <laughs> I can't think of a reason for this 28 to 105. I want to keep it because it's so, it's, it's just so good, but actually that should go. That should go. Um, have I talked about that? That's just fun. 600 millimeter fixed f 2.8 mirror lens. It's old. It's by Sigma, Vivitar, various people kind of brand the same, same thing. If you're shooting the moon, you want that. I don't really can't think of any other thing I want to, I would want to use it for. Maybe if I was at an air show or something. Yeah, if I was an air show, I'd take that. 600 millimeters is a long way, and it's actually optically pretty good, and because it's got the mirror, it's very compact. Um, other bits and pieces, those are extension tubes for macro that I don't really use because I have bellows as well, and that kind of tiny, tiny macro lens shooting, I just don't have the patience for it. I just don't, I don't find it that fun. And then something I got and don't really use is a 1.4x teleconverter. Uh, it is a Kenko, which is said to be good. I haven't compared a whole bunch. Um, haven't compared a whole bunch, but that's but, but that's supposed to be good. Um, that would mate to that. I can't see any other lens I would want to mate that to. I don't see any logic. Possibly, just for fun, that 600 turn that into a 1200. Although at 1200, I don't even think my real my best tripod would would not jiggle somewhat at 1200 mil. I don't know. I'll have to play. Next time there's a good moon, I'll play. Uh, in terms of what I compared this to, like I said, the any of these older f 2.8 lenses stuff the modern kit lenses and and tell and Nikon consumer zooms. They just stuff them. Like when you look, it's very popular for people to buy a t something like a 28 to 300. That's, that's, so that's doing everything. From 28 to 300 is kind of that plus a little bit on the low end. So that and a combination of a little bit of that all the way through that with that connected. How, how, how is one cheap lens and they're not they're not exactly cheap but optically the physics it's impossible to do a good job of all of that in in a consumer lens it's just it's just ridiculous so so don't buy that kind of lens it's just dumb um in comparison so i've got a here's where my dilemma is right now so I do use the range of the 35 to 70. I do use this lens quite a lot. It's really not as good as the Nikon 24 to 80. 2.8. Uh, but that lens is, oh, really, it's, it's $2,400 new. Like that they don't come up on eBay very much. Maybe say maybe I could get one for seventeen fifty, eighteen hundred 1800 bucks. Oh, that's a lot of money. But I would like that lens because I could sell I would probably I could let that go. The ultra wide lens, so that's five hundred bucks. The two point eight thirty five to seventy I'd let go. Um I definitely let that go. That's another hundred. Hang on, this might lead to an eBay thing this afternoon. What else would I let go for that? I could let probably keep the 20 millimeter prime just for a little bit wider, but that's so I could get 500, 800, 950. I could probably get take get a thousand dollars out of those three lens, and would be happy to not have and spend another seven hundred dollars and have that Nikon 24 to 7. Oof, that's tempting. That might happen. But that's the way I think. That's what, that's the way I think. I don't think of so much of buying lenses. I think of, say, if I look up, if I look up on my records, that probably cost me, probably paid 280 for that. 260 or 280. I bet if I photograph that magically, 
in the studio, I can sell it for 320. So even after eBay fees, I'll make a bit of money on it. Even more so when I buy, like if I buy an old, uh, like I probably bought an old film camera for half nothing, like 50 bucks or something, that somebody didn't realize that this was a good lens that was selling with it. So I do that a lot too. So I don't really care about spending hundreds of money on stuff because I, I, I usually do it in a way that it costs me just a fraction of that. So anyway, that's a ramble about some lenses that I think are really great that I highly recommend for specific things. Um, and in terms of philosophy, I think that's a really good philosophy too. I can, I can spiral into wanting to buy everything I might possibly need um, with eBay being so fast in delivery, with so much stuff being available, with Amazon Prime, shoot, just go out and shoot. Just go out and use equipment and work out what you're lacking. Work out what you actually need and buy to fill the holes. Um, and if you want to know what fills a hole really cheaply, let me know. I'd be happy to help.